he I heard him scream at her to get off the phone get off the phone and then the phone hung up so I'm at home trying to figure out where is my kid and why is our officer screaming at her like that and trying to figure out how I'm gonna get to her So our data showed that the both black and Hispanic drivers are overstopped relative to their share of the population. And in particular, black drivers are roughly 60 to 70 percent more likely to be stopped than their share of the population, and Hispanics about 80 percent more likely. In contrast, whites are slightly understopped relative to their share of the driving population, and Asians are significantly less likely to be stopped compared to their share of the driving population. One of the recent pieces of research I've done is to reanalyze data from approximately a half a million traffic stops in Vermont uh, by a, over tw about 29 agencies to look at the role of race in police decision making in, in traffic stops. I can recall one time when I was driving with one of my white friends who's a female and she only had one contact in so she was like swerving all around the road and it was pouring raining outside so we ended up getting pulled over and I had my hood on because it was raining and the police officer asked for all of her information and then proceeded to say, um, sir, can I please see your ID as well? So then we both, my friend and I were appalled because I was like, sir, like I'm a woman and I took my hood off. And then he instantly was like super apologetic and felt really bad um, about misgendering me. But then he stopped asking me for like any identification. But I thought it was really interesting that me as a passenger, he felt obligated to ask for my ID when I wasn't even driving. So from that point on, when I got to be a black man in that moment, I, I knew that like there was definitely some profiling involved. We used a much more sophisticated statistical technique and what we found was that even when we control for many other factors, that race is a prominent factor in an officer's decision to search a vehicle and it is also a prominent factor in the probability of finding contraband. stopped by police as a person of color um, is an intense experience and I say that because on the national scene and because of social media and because of our our instant ways of communicating um, we're learning more and more stories that are not ending out well so that fear is always with you um, my son and I were coming from um, Winooski, where I lived, he needed a ride into town. And I dropped him off at his apartment right across the bridge from Winooski. And I pulled in around 10 o'clock at night. It was um, Halloween Eve. And um, dropped him off. He wanted to go in his apartment, get a couple things, and came back out. Meanwhile, a police cruiser from Burlington was making its rounds. And our eyes met. And then he turned around and came back, and our eyes met. And then my son came out and he hopped in the car and then we drove over um, across Colchester Ave and up Riverside. And as soon as we crossed into Riverside, I saw the cruiser following me into town. And being black, um, I'm very aware when I'm around police and um, my lights were working, I'm doing 25 miles an hour, there's no reason to stop me. And we got this far into Burlington where he wanted to get dropped off right down the street and the blue lights come on. So I pull over and the officer comes over. I hand him my paper. And there was another officer on the curb with a flashlight just sh shining inside the car, obviously looking for who knows what. And uh, the officer explained, well, we were looking for two suspicious black people driving a black Honda. Well, I was driving a black Saab. So, what's the story? And my son's getting agitated. 
and this has happened many times before. And he starts raising his voice, and I told him, close the window and shut your mouth, because this is how a police stop turns into disorderly conduct. And um, so finally the officer comes back, and he actually apologized, which kind of stunned me. But I think he realized who I was. Um, people know of my work in the community, and I'm a law-abiding citizen. Um, and that was it. Um, I didn't get his badge number. I just wanted to get home. I just wanted to get, get, get off the streets. What is happening is that black and brown bodies are much more heavily surveilled and monitored by the police than our white bodies. A national problem, but clearly existing here in Vermont. Our Dora, she got stopped on her way to basketball practice. You know, she's a new driver. She was a senior. And uh, she was on her way to practice. And one, the officer uh, kept telling her to get off the highway. I trained my kids to, you know, be very careful when you get stopped. You want to be in a well-lit place, all those things that um, parents of color do. And so she was very nervous as to why he wanted her to get off the highway. So she finally did get off the highway and called me. And while I was on the phone with her, he, I heard him scream at her to get off the phone, get off the phone. And then the phone hung up. So I'm at home trying to figure out where is my kid and why is there an officer screaming at her like that and trying to figure out how I'm going to get to her. And fortunately, she called me back. She said, oh, he said that I was speeding, and um, and then he gave her a warning, and there was a whole bunch of funniness with the ticket. Um, but everybody who knows my daughter knows that she doesn't speed, and everybody says that, but we know because we call her slow-mo because she drives so slow. <laughs> she still drives so slow. So anyway, but she said he said she was speeding, and, and she, when she asked him, because she called me, he said no, it was against protocol and um, it scared her to death. And one of the things I think may have contributed to her being stopped, because I don't think that she was actually speeding, but okay, let's say she was, she, um, she's tall like me, but not quite as tall as me. She's like about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, uh, and she has short hair like me. Um, and at dusk, you driving by, you appear to be a black male. And I find that to be true when I get stopped. So my worry as a parent is, whether it will be perceived as males before um, questions are asked or they actually identify us for who we are. Vermonters believe themselves to be very liberal, right? We see ourselves as a progressive state that problems of racism are problems of the South or of the Midwest, but they're not problems here. But the data suggests the opposite. The data suggests that Vermont is no different than any other part of the country. In fact, our disparities in terms of search rates and stop rates are mirror those in North Carolina, in Missouri, and in a number of other states in the country. If people were asked me today, is it getting any better? I would say no. I think it's actually getting worse. But until white folk take responsibility for institutional racism and committing themselves to do something about it. It'll be the same, it'll persist. And in my view, I think it's an epidemic. First of all, the trauma and humiliation that people of color experience every day, whether it's being followed in the store, whether it's being seated near the bathroom in a restaurant, being passed over for jobs that they're qualified for, or being heavily surveilled and monitored by the police, is one that it leads to um, premature death, it leads to hypertension, it leads to uh, high degrees of trauma. And I think any de democratic society has to worry. We should all be, have compassion for that and we should be concerned about it. I think ultimately that's why I think racism is a health issue because it's all about cortisol that's being pumped through your veins and causing chronic issues and stresses and diseases that, that kill us before our time. It's real. And when I walk out the door every day, I'm a black person and I know what that means. And I know what it means to be in the presence of white people, especially people who are armed. So we're always on guard when we're around police.